love hearing from all of our viewers across the country. And over the last few weeks, you all have been sending us some great questions. So our family members got together today and we are gonna answer as many as we can. I am here at the French doors with Maria, who's wearing a blue glove. <laughs> Shirley's outside with Larissa. She's gonna tell us something about the plants out there. And Ken is inside with something that's a bit of an eyesore that a lot of us have in our homes and he's gonna help us fix that. Hi guys. Hey Hello. everybody. Hi. Ready? We're Ken. ready, let's go. All right, let's get started with Maria. So Maria, this question comes from Wallace Smith in Georgia and he says, hey Maria, how can I make fake fruit look frosted? That's not easy to say. <laughs> I wanna do this and decorate my home with them for the holidays. Good question. Yes, thank you Wallace for your question. I absolutely agree with you. I love the look of the frosted so fruit. So to go about doing this, you obviously wanna use some fake fruit. So this is what it looks like prior to the frosting process. And all you really need is some spray adhesive. I love spray adhesive okay. more than a Mod Podge for this because it's gonna evenly coat it without it getting too chunky. Okay. So you can see here with the grapes. The grapes, I, I actually used an Epsom salt for this because it gives you that really nice kind of crystallized look. Whereas with the, the pears, they're covered in a glitter. So that actually looks really nice and sort of fancy chic. and chic. Yeah. yeah, very frosted. So okay. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So I'm gonna spray these grapes. Oh, spray the grapes first. And Deb, if you want to use some of the uh, Epsom, salt, Epsom salt. And just drizzle it on. Yep. And I'm gonna uh, oh, do that. I'm gonna do this real quick on the apple. So here's the thing. With the frosted fruit, you have a couple options in the sense that you can uh, you can make it look just like it has like the frosted look on it with this, and you can still see the background color. Or you can try to cover the whole thing so it almost looks white. So if you wanna go about doing that. I know, isn't that pretty? Look how pretty that is, even the leaf. Yes, oh, it is pretty. Oh, Wallace. Look how simple that was. I hope it helps. It does. And you can get more coverage with the finer grain glitter if thank you get you. the finer grain like this. Okay, thank you, Maria. That and was that's awesome. It. So while we continue to make our frosted fruit, we're going to toss it out to Larissa and uh, Shirley. What are you guys doing? Yeah, so Shirley, we have a question for you from Michelle pompos Lozi in Dublin, Ohio. Now okay. she says, Shirley, how do I keep my basil plant going all summer long? Oh. Easy. Okay, Michelle, all you have to do is remember to keep harvesting leaves. So there's a right way and a wrong way to harvest leaves from your plant. Okay. So you always, if you want just a few leaves, take the leaves right from the top, never from the bottom of your stem. So this is like what you're going to use today. Okay. okay. Now, if you want to take a lot more than that, then what you want to do is you want to go to the stem and you want to cut right above where a little leaf is growing. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little leaf right Aww. there. So, yes, and then I put it in a glass of water instead of the refrigerator. The refrigerator tends to make the basil turn black. Oh. And, and it doesn't last as long. And if you change the water, Larissa, on this every two days, it's going to stay fresh for a couple weeks. So that's what you do. And just go ahead and harvest from different plants. I would say if you like to use this a lot in your cooking, have at least four plants for, for, two, for a couple. Wow. And just go like that and never take more than a third from each plant. And as you clip, it tells the plant, grow some more leaves. I love it. It's that awesome. That's wonderful. Okay, thank you, Shirley. You and now it. let's head inside and check in with Debbie and Ken. Thank you, guys. I love basil. All right, we're in here for the last question. This yep. is for Ken, and this is to cover this eyesore. It comes from Amanda Anksman in Minneapolis. She says, Ken, living in Minneapolis is great. We love our radiators during the winter, but during the warm months, it's a little bit of an eyesore. Yep, do you have any clever ideas for disguising it? Well, let's be honest, Amanda. Even during <laughs> the winter, it's an eyesore. You just forgive it because it gives you warmth. <laughs> um, so all you're gonna need to do is get your radiator, measure it, find the dimension, then head out to your local flea market, corner store, or even your garage, and find a table, a nice wood breakfast dining table that's gonna fit. And then you're gonna do a little bit of cutting. I did that earlier today. So measure the width of your table and your radiator width plus a couple of inches. Do that all the way down the table and do a long line. Make sure the table is long enough to cover the entire thing or you may want to cut it long ways like I am. Also do that down the edge, the apron, and then cut it. I use the jigsaw on the side, but you can also use a hand saw if you're not comfortable with power tools. I switch to a circular saw to do the top. Again, just do a hand saw if you're not comfortable with that. And boom, you end up with two wow. separate halves of a table that should be the perfect size to cover there your, it is. boom, How to about cover that? your radiator. Look at this. All I did now is add a little piece of wood straight to your wall. That's gonna be your ledger board. And then you're just gonna add there this go. right on there to hold it in place, because it only has two legs. You know, people pay a lot of money for these foyer tables. You do, I know. And now this is like built in, it's custom. 
That is boom. You want to hand me a few pieces? And the thing is with radiators, they're always like in the middle of rooms because that's where they need to be for the heat. And you so they have really to, are eyesores. You don't have to worry about it being some sort of fire hazard? No, because those work with hot water. Remember the clang, clang you hear when they turn on? Oh, there's no right. electricity, there's no coil, so you don't have to worry at all. So from an eyesore, to an entry hall table, voila. You've done it again, Kenneth Wingard. <laughs> for more information, please go to hallmarkchannel.com. And thank you to all of our viewers yes, for writing in. We love hearing from you. So send us those cards and those messages. And